AMD posted benchmarks for the RX 6000 series of graphics cards on their website. Are they the same as they shown in their presentation? Did they give us any new information? Let's get into it. In my last video, I went through AMD's presentation on October 28th and analyzed the charts in great detail to provide an early indication of how well we can expect Big Navi to perform on launch day against Nvidia's 30 series of graphics cards. AMD then decided to post benchmarks on their website just two days later on October 30th. They were of the same 10 games shown in their presentation, however, a few things did change. The NVIDIA GPUs now have lower frames per second in two games, Borderlands 3 and Resident Evil 3. It was consistent on all three NVIDIA GPUs for these two games. The frame rates stayed the same on the other eight games and they actually validated the frame rates I calculated and showed in my last video. I do not know why the frame rates went down on these two games. However, if we focus on the impact of those changes on the RTX 3080 versus the RX 6800 XT at 4K, then we can see if the change has any impact on the conclusions. Looking at AMD's chart during their presentation, you can see that in Borderlands 3, the 3080 is clearly above 60 frames per second and more specifically at 62. If you look at AMD's website for the same game, you can now see the 3080 at 58.24 frames per second or a 6% drop in performance. Moving over to Resident Evil 3, AMD's chart during their presentation, the 3080 is clearly above 120 frames per second, and more specifically at 124. If you look at AMD's website for the same game, you can now see the 3080 at 120.4, or a 3% drop. Now, those don't seem to be that significant. However, in my last video I showed where I tallied up the wins, losses, and ties. To recap, if the RX 6800 XT was 5% or greater over the 3080, then it was a win. If the 3080 was 5% better than the 6800 XT, then it was a loss. And if the differences are within 5%, then it was a tie. So the RX 6800 XT won in 3, lost in 2, and tied in 5, and being on average 1% better in these 10 games. They are essentially trading blows. However, with the frame rate reduction for the 3080 in these two games, you can see that in Borderlands 3, it went from a tie to a win for the 6800 XT. And in Resident Evil 3, it went from a loss to a tie. So the tally went from 3 wins, 2 losses, and 5 ties, to 4 wins, 1 loss, and 5 ties. But you will never see that comparison since AMD also made changes to the RX 6800 XT results on their website, and now they are shown with Smart Access Memory enabled. At the presentation, they did not have Smart Access Memory enabled on the RX 6800 XT, and I thought those were the best charts. Now they are enabled, and the frame rates with SAM only increased on some of the games, but the impact was different at 1440p versus 4K resolution. At 1440p, you see the frame rates increased on Borderlands 3, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, and Resident Evil 3. At 4K, there was an increase on Borderlands 3, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, but no change for Resident Evil 3, but an increase was seen on Wolfenstein. So the improvement you'll see in enabling SAM not only depends on the game, but also the resolution. So how does this change the outlook? Let's look at 1440p. From my chart in my last video, the RX 6800 XT was on average 4% faster over these 10 games, and it won in 3, lost in 1, and tied in 6. Now with SAM enabled, you see it is on average 9% faster, wins in 5, loses in 1, and ties in 4. Moving over to 4K from my last video, the 6800 XT is on average 1% faster over these 10 games. It wins in 3, loses in 2, and ties in 5. Very even. Now with SAM enabled, the 6800 XT is 4% faster, wins in 5, loses in 1, and ties in 4. Now it looks more like a winner versus the 3080. The data AMD posted for the RX 6900 XT now does not include Rage Mode. This is great since we can now calculate the effect of Rage Mode when it is enabled. Showing the gaming results at 4K from the slides in the presentation on October 28th versus what was posted on the website, you can see a slight bump in performance. Calculating the individual performance gains, we can see that there is no effect on Doom Eternal and up to a 2.56% improvement on Gears 5. Averaging these out over the 10 games, we can see that Rage Mode provided an average improvement of 1.27%.
With the RX 6900 XT data now available without Rage Mode, does that change the conclusion? In my last video, I shared this slide where at 4K, the 6900 XT was on average 4% faster over the 10 games, and at 1 in 5, lost in 2, and tied in 3. Now, with Rage Mode removed, we can compare the results. Keep in mind that the 3090 has lower frame rates in Borderlands 3 and Resident Evil 3. So with these changes, you can see that the 6900 XT is now just 3% faster, so it lost 1% without Rage Mode, and it wins in 5, loses in 1, and ties in 4. I still stand by my previous conclusion that without SAM, the 3090 will just edge out the 6900 XT. AMD now also provided data on their website at 1440p for both cards, something we didn't get at their presentation, so this is new. At 1440p, the 6900 XT is on average 7% faster than the 3090, and it wins in 5 and ties in 5. Just keep in mind, this is with smart access memory enabled. But it does show the trend where the 6900 XT is better at 1440p than the 3090. What about the RX 6800? Minor changes happen and I'll just show the slides. The overall conclusion doesn't really change. And it should not come as any surprise since the RX 6800 has 60 compute units and is on AMD's big Navi die, while the 3070 has just 46 SMs and is on Nvidia's smaller GA104 die. It's like a heavyweight taken on a middleweight. It's no contest. That's why you can expect to see NVIDIA release an RTX 3070 Ti, which will be a cut-down version of the RTX 3080 die with 58 SMs enabled to take on the 60 compute units in the RX 6800. I had a chance to watch some of the other reviews of AMD's event on October 28th, and I was surprised at how surprised most of the other YouTube channels reacted to the announcement. Video Cards posted a tweet that showed the jaw-dropping reactions. When I first saw that, my first reaction was, did I miss something? I had to go back and double check my calculations. I was thinking about what the other videos were showing and what they were saying, and I tried to understand the conclusion that AMD is going to win. Now I know some of these thumbnails are exaggerated and a bit clickbaity, but the reviewers just seem awfully enthusiastic for AMD. These reviewers are pretty smart, so what's going on here? At first, I thought maybe everyone was just glancing at the charts and playing the game of high bar. In other words, who's got the higher bars in the charts. So I threw all the results into one slide to see if it would show a trend. I plotted all the results for all the cards at 4K. I also colored the bars as well for Team Green and Team Red. When I looked at the chart to play the game of high bar, I can count that AMD comes out on top in five games and Nvidia comes out on top in five games. So I see a tie. So it can't be just that. In double checking the results on AMD's website, I noticed how the red bars just popped from the charts. To me, it seemed as though AMD won more than they lost. I then recolored my chart in a similar red gray bar fashion. Then I asked a couple of people to look at the chart and quickly tell me who wins. And a quick response always came up, the red bar wins. I know that it was a tie, but the red color just pops and it's easy to see the wins within the chart. I then did a little research on colors and marketing and came across something interesting. In marketing, colors are very important. Colors are used to get your audience to see what you want them to see. And red is a very powerful and dynamic color. If you are looking to have a powerful presence or get someone's attention fast, then red is your go-to color. After learning that, I modified my chart and I switched the colors so that AMD now had the gray color. I asked a few people to look at that slide again and quickly tell me who won, and guess what? It was the red bar that won. Now this is far from scientific and is really just a hunch. However, I am curious for those watching, if you quickly look at the chart, do you also quickly come to the conclusion that red wins? Please leave a comment below. And if you're a fan of NVIDIA, then here's how NVIDIA might show the chart. Which AMD GPU should I get? We can compare with an AMD's RX 6000 series since they all have smart access memory enabled and rage mode off. The percentage differences will be relatively constant between them. Let's start at the low end. If you are looking at the RX 6800 and wondering if you should move up to the RX 6800 XT, then consider this. 
the RX 6800 XT is on average 15% faster at 1440p and 17% faster at 4K than the 6800. You get all this while paying 12% more. Or, for 12% more money, you get 15-17% to 17 more performance. What about moving up to the 6900 XT? The 6900 XT is on average 6% faster at 1440p and 8% faster at 4K than the 6800 XT. You get all this while paying 54% more. Or, for 54% more money, you get 6-8% to more performance. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.